Hello and welcome to this Lightroom black and white portrait editing tutorial. Today I'm gonna take this raw file and I'm gonna turn it into a beautiful black and white portrait while I'll explain to you every step I do from start to finish. So this is a portrait of just a man who was feeding pigeons in Paris and you know I just thought that he looked interesting with all of that hair and stuff so I asked him for a portrait and he said yes so I took it. It was really not ideal as you can see it was kind of cricket. ISO 1600 very high with a Canon 600D crop sensor body a couple of years old so not the best ISO performance. 32 millimeters with a Canon 18 to 55 kit lens, which would equivalent to around 50 millimeters on full frame, which I think is fine. F4.5 is the widest that lens would go at this focal length, and 1 200th of a second gyro speed is just what kind of what uh, gave me the correct exposure, even though I probably could have gone down to 800 ISO and uh, lower the shutter speed to 1 100th in, if I look at it afterwards, but in the moment I just didn't think about it unfortunately. Alright, so let's get started with editing. I definitely think I want to edit this in black and white. Now color is actually not too bad either, but I think in the background it's not really interesting and I feel, you know, with such a face, so much hair, I really think that would work the best in black and white. So first thing I'm gonna do is definitely crop the image because I think there's too much to the left, too much to the right, and I think a one-to-one -one crop will work pretty well here. Maybe even crop down some of that. And I really don't want to straighten it. I think that kind of tilted look looks pretty good for this portrait. So let's get started with editing. Definitely want to erase the shadow just to have a lot of detail to work with and you see the difference. Really, really drastic. Highlights. There are not many highlights on this photo. Let me actually go to the whites first and try to bring them up. Hmm. Now, in my landscape pictures, I usually bring down the highlights, but in this portrait, in this particular portrait, I think bringing up the highlights might actually work pretty well, just to give a little bit more life in the whole picture, and I think it does it in a little bit more subtle way than the whites. But I'm still going to try and bring up the whites, let's see. Of course, press down the Alt key to make sure that we at least not have anything in the face clipped. And then I think I'm gonna bring down the blacks just a little bit. Yeah, that definitely gives a very, very nice sense of contrast. And speaking of contrast, I'm also gonna add a little bit of contrast in the contrast slider. And I really like this look. Now it's a little bit too dark maybe on his left part of his face, but I'm gonna fix that in a second. But first I want to change the clarity and I think I'm going to add a little bit of clarity just because it really works for the texture in the beard and in his uh, ripples on the face. I don't want to go too far with it otherwise it will really take away all of the natural look and it will just be over the top but a little bit of plus clarity works I think for this photo. So I've mentioned about the left part of his face being a little bit too dark. I'm gonna fix that with a radial filter. You really could use an adjustment brush as well but I just think the radial filter will do a little bit of a better job here. So I'm just gonna drag one over his left part of the face and just make sure that the feather is to 100 and then just introduce a little bit of plus exposure. Now this really isn't fine tuning anything, this is just kind of getting the rough look. I might add some more uh, once I am done with global adjustments, but for the start I think that will look a lot better, because here is before it, here is after, it was just a little bit too dark. Then tonal curve, I think I'm gonna introduce a little bit of plus highlights, and just play around with the other sliders. I'm really not that experienced with portrait editing. I really usually do landscape, cityscape, you know, that kind of stuff. But I've edited this picture actually before, so I just wanted to kind of redo it and share the whole process with you because I think at the end the picture looks pretty good. So I've changed all of these sliders and just stuck around with whatever looked best. And then I'm gonna change the point curve, or at least see if I want to change anything there. 
I hmm, I think this look isn't bad or anything, but at the end I think linear. I just like this uh, very contrasty, but yet a lot of detail in the shadows look the best. And when I really go in any other setting, it kind of gets a little bit too much for my taste. So I'm just gonna stick on linear, just gonna skip the HSL tool, split toning, also don't wanna add any color in this folio. Detail, I am going to use the detail tool. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of noise. It's not so distinctive because it's a portrait and also of course because it's a black and white picture. And I actually think a little bit of noise actually works for this photo. It kind of amplifies the mood and really sets the tone of this photo. So I'm actually definitely not gonna reduce anything, any noise here with noise reduction. I really don't like, like the noise reduction slider anyways because it takes away so much of the detail and in this case also a lot of the character. So I'm just gonna leave that at zero but I am going to add a little bit of sharpening nothing too wild, maybe around 45, zoom back out again and bring the masking slider to the right while holding down the old key. Kinda looks like Albert Einstein, doesn't he? And I'm just gonna bring the slider to the right until all of the non textured surface is not really sharpened. So I think that works pretty well. Once again, really don't uh, need noise reduction in this to in this picture because I really think the noise works. So I'm actually done with the detail tool. Then I'm gonna go down to the lens corrections and just enable profile corrections and that will get rid of the distortion as well as the vignetting. Distortion removing is definitely a nice thing but I oftentimes like to bring down the vignetting just because it helps to give more attention towards the center and especially in this photo I really think vignetting works well. So because vignetting works really well I'm actually gonna add additional vignetting here in the effects tools and I'm gonna play around with the midpoint and the amount. The rest of these sliders really don't have that big of an impact but I am going to play around with these top sliders right here and I actually want to add quite a bit of vignetting just because I really don't want any attention to go towards the uh, out of focus tilted background. I really want him to be the main focus of this picture. So I'm gonna go down quite a lot with vignetting and maybe I'm just gonna go into the extreme first so I can change the midpoint and just adjust that one first. I really wanna make sure that pretty much everything uh, out of his face is selected here and then I'm gonna fine tune the amount and I really think I'm gonna go quite far here around minus 40, 45, really further than I've ever gone in any of my regular pictures. So I think that works really well and camera calibration really doesn't have that big of an impact. It does have a tiny impact but in black and white it's really not very noticeable. So I'm actually gonna say that I'm done with the global adjustments. So now I'm gonna do the local adjustments. And the first thing I'm gonna do here is just grab an adjustment brush and bring down the exposure, make sure that the feather is quite high so you have a very natural look to it. And then I'm just gonna add some more custom vignetting over the parts that are still kind of too bright. And I think that works a lot better. Just a little difference, but it works a little bit better. And then I'm gonna grab another radial filter. Remember at the start I added a radial filter over the left of his face because I think that was kind of too dark. But I may actually have overdone it a little bit because I like a slight differentiation between the left and the right part. I think that actually works, but it's just too much how it is without any adjustments but I am going to bring down that quite a bit from what I've added at the start. So I actually think the overall kind of dynamic is pretty good already, but the thing that I definitely want to do is brighten up his eyes just because they are so much in shadow and I think that could work a lot better if they were brighter. So I just added a, a radial filter over his right eye for now and I'm gonna go into the plus exposure. You don't wanna overdo that obviously, but just adding a little bit, maybe even go plus shadows, 
can work pretty well. Then I'm gonna right click duplicate and just drag it over his other eye as well because this is the left and a little bit darker side according to the lighting scheme. I'm just gonna fine tune that and make it not as uh, much as I did with the right eye. And it's always a good idea to just kind of, uh, you know, look at the picture and see did I do it too much, is it not enough, and I think I'm just gonna fine tune that really quickly. And yeah, here is before any radial filters and here's after. I think it works a lot better. Now I think this could actually, this is a really weird thing that I'm gonna do, but I'm actually gonna try to add local clarity with the adjustment brush on his face, on just some parts of his face, and that way I really just wanna create some additional interest and make some parts a little bit more clarity than others and I actually think it works it's a really really small impact maybe I'm actually gonna mix that with contrast yeah I actually think that works pretty well hmm I think though his overall forehead is a little bit too bright so I'm gonna grab another uh, adjustment brush and just bring down the exposure and just kind of paint over some of this part right here and then of course fine tune the exposure and at the end I do think we have a pretty good picture. Now another thing that I really like to do usually in my landscape pictures but I'm gonna try regardlessly here for this portrait is to kind of amplify the light. So as you can see here the light is obviously coming from the right hitting his nose, the left is a little bit darker. So I'm trying to amplify that uh, by grabbing a graduated filter and just kind of drag it over the entire right portion of his face or pretty much the right portion of the image and just go a little bit into the plus exposure and grab another one and put it over the left part of his face and go a little bit into the minus exposure. Now you don't want to do this too much otherwise you know you're going to make it very cartoonish and very unnatural but if you just do it a little bit you won't even notice it. It just makes the overall picture a little bit more interesting. So here's before that and here's after. I really really like it. Then another thing that I really didn't think I wanted to do initially but I think could actually work is to add some dodge and burning with the radial filter. Dodge and burning is making individual parts darker or brighter and this is a thing that I usually do in my landscapes but I actually think it might work with some parts of this uh, beard right here. So I'm gonna just add a radial filter right here and go into the plus exposure and just try to make it a little bit more interesting then right click duplicate and just see if it might work in some other parts add another one over here maybe down there right click duplicate maybe on the right part of his mustache and then of course adjust the actual value and you know just complexify the light a bit grab another one and this time go minus exposure and also drag it around and you know just amplifying this light coming from the right a little bit more even and yeah I don't want to do it too much but I think hmm, actually never mind I think his left eye is still a bit too dark so I'm gonna just brighten up that one and I also think maybe the highlights on his nose and his forehead are a little bit too pronounced. I'm gonna go into the tonal curve of the global adjustments and just bring down the highlight slider here. The highlight slider down there really just affects the very bright parts. So I think this slider will do this the effect that I want the best, if that made any sense. At the end, I think I'm done here with this picture, so let's see where we start started at. This is the raw file and you see it's a completely different picture. Uh, as I said before, I've adjusted this picture before but I just reset everything. So this is really the raw file how it was out of camera and this is what we made out of it which I think is a very dramatic, very strong black and white portrait and I definitely think it works a lot better than the starting point. Thank you very much for watching my first portrait tutorial, usually I really do landscapes but this is really a photo that I just wanted to share how I edit 
and make a tutorial out of it. So if you've enjoyed this video and you learned something from it, please take a second to click this like button. It really helps me out a ton and is really really appreciated. And if you would like to see other Lightroom tutorials, mostly about landscape and landscape photography edits, Lightroom tutorials, in the near future even landscape on location videos, then be of course sure to subscribe. I upload one photography related video every single day of the week. Once again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day and please take care.